Hi, I'm Casey and this is Redshift. So when I first started using my telescope at college, my favorite thing of all time to do was to just set it up in the middle of our big field, keep it tracked on Jupiter, play some groove jams, and ask anybody who passed if they wanted to see the Galilean moons of Jupiter. Because some people have never seen that with their own two eyes, and to hear the gasp and sometimes see the look on people's faces when they see it for the first time is totally priceless, and also the reason why a lot of amateur astronomers do outreach in the first place. So I thought we could do that today. We're gonna go outside and look at the three planets that are out tonight through a telescope and I'm gonna warn you that they do not look as spectacular as they do in the pictures but you're gonna see what you would see with your own eyes if you looked through my telescope which is still incredibly cool so I'm gonna take you out we're gonna talk a little bit about them and see them with our own two eyes so let's stop talking here and get outside let's go do -do 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 -do. Do, 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 do. Hello there, stranger. What a beautiful summer evening in the Los Angeles area we're having. It appears that three planets are out right now, specifically Jupiter, Mars, and Saturn. Would you like to see them through my trusty telescope? You would. Let's take a look, shall we? All right, so right now we are pointed at Jupiter. Jupiter! Right now you can see two of the Galilean moons. Actually, you can see three of them. Those moons that you're seeing that are orbiting Jupiter are the four biggest moons. Jupiter has like 50 moons, but those are the four biggest ones. And those are the ones that Galileo Galilei saw in his telescope when he looked uh, through it in 1610. Back in that time, it was widely accepted that the Earth was the center of the universe and that everything, like stars, planets, sun, all orbited us. And that was the theory known as uh, geocentrism, like we are the center of the whole universe galaxy. But Galileo noticed that these satellites were orbiting Jupiter, which was a pretty big deal because it showed that celestial objects could orbit something other than Earth, so that gave evidence for the completely ludicrous theory that we orbited the sun and not everything orbited us, which was put forth by Copernicus. And that is a really cool story if you ever want to look into like, you know, space drama. So if you spent just a couple days or even just one whole night observing Jupiter, you'd see the moons move. If you had a higher magnitude telescope and you can see Jupiter's red spot, you'd also see it move because Jupiter spins really fast. A day on Jupiter is only 10 hours, so a full Revolution on Jupiter is only that long. Sometimes you can see Jupiter's red spot through here. You can't see it now. But if you've seen that, that's a, a big giant storm that's been raging on Jupiter for like 300 years. And that's crazy. And probably a poem waiting to be written for whoever wants to claim it. Okay, let's move on. All right, so here we are at Mars. We know a lot about Mars because we are very close to it. So close, in fact, that we like put stuff on it and pretty sure we're gonna put people on it. Through the telescope, you can see that it's red. You can't see it so much through camera, but you can kind of see how red it is when I adjust the focus there so it isn't really red as much as it is orange a lot of people have said that when they look through it for the first time right now it just mostly looks white so we like Mars and we want to explore Mars because it's similar to us in a lot of ways we're pretty near in size our days are about the same length and we both got seasons some of the cooler features of Mars is they have the biggest mountain the whole solar system Mount Olympus which is like over 25 kilometers high which is three times the size of Mount Everest, if you can imagine like three Mount Everests. Along with that, it's also got the biggest canyon in the whole solar system covering 4,000 kilometers of its surface. So Mars is definitely a place of extremes. Why has Mars got that orangish reddish hue we see when we zoom in and out of the camera here? Um, that's basically rust, kind of. Iron rust more specifically, as the soil on Mars is made of iron and iron turns red when exposed to oxygen. How did all that oxygen get there to turn the whole planet red? Uh, uh, I don't know, Mars has dust storms that can develop within a few hours and cover the whole entire planet. What? That's really cool! There's a lot we don't know about Mars, but we're learning a lot more with those, like, rovers we got there and our plans to send people there, and that's just Super, super exciting. I hope you're excited about that, because I am. Let's move over to my favorite planet to look at through a telescope, which is Saturn. Let's go. We have arrived at the jewel of the solar system, Saturn. You can see its rings. You can see its body. I don't know. Those rings are just amazing. It's so cool. Oh my gosh. Saturn, like human beings, is beautiful and strange. It's pretty huge and magnificent, but it's also not very, like, solid. Uh, the body of the planet itself is made mostly of gases, and, like, if you had a 200,000-mile big pool and put Saturn in it, 
it would float. The rings have to be crazy enormous because Saturn is very, very, very far away from us, but we can still see them here on Earth. But despite that, they're not very thick. They're less than a kilometer thick, I believe. The rings are also not solid. They're just made of a bunch of really tiny rocks orbiting the planet at its equator. I don't have a lot to say about Saturn because I don't know a lot about Saturn, but obviously it's a really cool planet, but like many beautiful things, I just want to sit and appreciate it for all that it is. So that's it. I hope you're inspired to go out yourself and see some of these things for yourself with your own eyes. Go to a local star party, go to your local astronomy club or observatory because there is nothing quite like seeing these things for yourself with your own eyeballs. Thank you guys so much for watching. Clear skies. I will see you next time. Peace. This car is, par this car is partying hard.